Do you want uh, delicious bread that you can make at the push of a button? This'll do it. And it makes even more than bread. Did you know that? I didn't. I thought it would just make bread. So if you're in the market looking for a bread machine, have you considered these ojirushi? Hey guys, Pat here at All Day Eight Like a Shark, where I share my Japanese recipe videos once a week, showing you how to cook Japanese food. Today, what we're going to be doing is a little bit of a product review. I have my Zojirushi bread machine here. This is the BBPAC20 bread machine. This is the Virtuoso model. I've had this for about three years, four years now, I would say. And I got this because I enjoy baking bread. And even better, when the machine does it for me. So usually um, I used to do this by hand. I'd break bake my bread with my stand mixer and even before that with a uh, handheld uh, mixer, which was a ton of work and it takes quite a long time. If you've ever made homemade bread before, you know that it takes at least a half day, sometimes an entire day, or even more if you're gonna be doing something overnight. So this bread machine makes that whole process much simpler. Before we get started, let's just do a little quick overview of what this thing comes with. It comes with a instruction manual, it comes with the machine itself, it came with a measuring cup as well as a measuring spoon. Inside the box, you'll also find the bread loaf container. It comes with two paddles. This helps to uh, knead the dough. And the key tip here is that you have these aligned. The first time I used this machine, I think I got lucky my bread came out just fine. But the second time that I used it, they were not aligned. So kind of like how they are right now. One is pointing one way, one's pointed this way. If you do it like that, you're gonna get a lopsided loaf. So if you're doing dough, may not matter, but if you're actually gonna finish and bake the loaf inside here, you might end up with a lopsided a piece of bread or a loaf of bread. So what you need to do is just rotate until you have these blades pointing in the same direction. So I just use it, I just do like a 90 degree angle like that, pointed, pointed that way for both of them. So right now they're just about the same and that way you won't end up with any lopsided loaves. So key point there. First thing that I do when I'm baking bread with my machine is you need to follow the directions if you've never done it before. You always put in the liquids first and then you put in the dry ingredients like the flour, uh, the salt, and then the yeast or sugar, whatever it is that's dry. And then um, you put it in, you set whatever course that you're gonna use. So there's a quick courses, there's regular courses, there's basic, there's wheat, there's gluten-free as well as dough, jam courses, so you can make jam, like fruit jams, as well as cake or sourdough starter. I have only stuck with basic wheat, dough, and sourdough starter. I haven't tried the jam and cake or gluten-free, so I can't speak to those. But given the results that I've had with all the other courses, I'm sure it's gonna taste just fine. So the machine is very straightforward to use. So one of the things that the manual is going to outline for you is the difference between active dry yeast or rapid rise yeast. So rapid rise yeast works a little bit faster than active dry yeast. I've never used it, I always use active dry yeast. So the measurements are gonna be a little bit different and it also gives you the weights as well as the uh, volume for the liquid. I always measure out my dry ingredients. I found I always have a little bit more success that way. That's what the professional bakers do as well. So I'd Highly recommend if you don't have a scale to get one. I have a pretty small scale here, which is sufficient enough for my home, home baking purposes. This is a two kilogram scale. And that's what I use to measure out all of my ingredients when I bake. So definitely invest in a scale. They don't cost too much, like 20 bucks, for example. And uh, you should be able to see some better results with your baking if you have a scale and you use it. So one of the uh, reasons why I bought this versus the other model is that there's a little viewing window you can see what's going on inside. Um, there's also a heater on the top part, so it's gonna heat and bake everything evenly versus just from the bottom. Um, there's also a timer function, so you can set this so that the baking finishes in the morning. So you'll be woken up by the smell of fresh bread in your house, which is just like amazing. It's a great reason to wake up in addition to hot coffee or the smell of coffee. So you can wake up to the smell of coffee plus the smell of fresh baked bread. You can also control the crust. So there's a light, a medium, and a dark. I only stick to the light and the medium. The dark is a little bit too thick and dark for my taste. So if you like a thick and dark crust, maybe that's gonna be your thing. The menu is very intuitive to use. It's There's only a handful of buttons really. And um, the manual does a great job exp explaining how you need to move uh, in between the different items. So some of the pros and cons, this makes a very large loaf. As you can see here, it's about two pounds for one loaf which is sufficient for maybe, I don't know, for four to five people for, 
I don't know, three, three days. If you cut up this loaf into sandwich slices, it's probably enough for like eight sandwiches, like big sandwiches. If you have like a family of four or five, one loaf should last you uh, several days. If you are just one or two people, then you'll probably have leftovers that you might want to freeze. One thing about homemade bread is that it doesn't have any preservatives. If you don't eat it right away, you need to put it in the freezer or the refrigerator. Probably the freezer is better so it doesn't get hard um, because it's going to mold. I've had my bread mold because I didn't eat it quick enough and I did not like that. So some of the other pros, like I said, the uh, quantity is very big. The timer function is great, especially if you want to plan ahead. I use it often for making pizza dough. So I'll set it, I'll measure everything out, put the pizza dough ingredients in there and my dough will be ready um, a few hours later, which is great. Like I said before, all of the different things that it can make, it can make dough, it can make um, different types of bread, it can make sourdough starter, uh, all of those different things. So it's not just a bread machine, it does all kinds of other things, which is pretty cool. So the word for that is versatile. It also has a beeping, it makes a beeping noise, which might be annoying for some people, but it's good if you need to mix something in like nuts or fruits, like dried raisins, if you wanna make raisin bread or nut bread. Um, it'll beep when you need to add those things in at the end. Or it'll tell you when your dough is ready. If you're doing a dough course, it'll beep when the dough is ready to be baked. Or if you need to manipulate it further, so for example, like French bread, if you wanna make a French baguette, you can make the dough in the machine and then divide up your dough into um, long baguette pieces and score it. So some of the cons, this thing does get a little bit noisy when it's kneading the bread because it's, it's uh, it's, you know, there's a huge, there's a heavy weight in the middle. So it's going like wah, 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 wah. It makes that noise um, when it's doing the kneading. So if you live in a small space, like a studio, for example, or if you have this going early in the morning when you're sleeping, you might get woken up. I remember the first time that I did it in the morning, early in the morning, I got kind of woken up. I was like, what the hell is that? And it was the, uh, the machine. The other con I would say is you see these paddles here. These are gonna create holes in the bottom of your loaf. Now, if you're cutting it, and if you aren't showing the underside of your loaf to anybody, it doesn't really matter. But I guess some people, if uh, for aesthetic reasons, they might not want holes on the bottom of their loaves. That could be a con as well. So yeah, that's, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Those are the, uh, the pros and the cons that I can think of. If you have any that I miss, make sure to let me know in the comments. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this machine. Would definitely recommend it. Uh, some of the tips that I have, I have probably about seven tips. Like I mentioned before, make sure that you weigh out your ingredients. That'll leave a little bit less room for error versus measuring for measuring using cups and spoons and so on. Always weigh your ingredients like the professionals do. Also, make sure to follow the uh, directions in the manual. So I always start with liquid. You add liquid first, layer on the dry ingredients, and then put the yeast on top. That's what they recommend. Oh yeah, so this thing, when it starts to bake, it gets very warm. If you're gonna be opening freshly baked bread, there might be some steam that's accumulated inside. So if you open it, be very careful, because I got a whiff of really hot steam one time when I opened it, I was like, whoa. So you gotta be careful there. In addition, you wanna use oven mitts when you're taking this out, because these metal handles are gonna be really hot. After you take it out with your oven mitts, flip it over on a cutting board. So once you flip this over, you'll notice that there's little screws here. If the bread doesn't come out right away, it might be stuck on the, uh, the paddle. And all you have to do is rotate these. Uh, again, you should use your mitts because it's very hot. You can rotate these and this will help to rotate the uh, screws um, or the paddles that are on the other side and that'll help to get out your uh, loaf much easier. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention, Sometimes these paddles will get stuck. And I found that it's usually because some ingredients like flour or something else has gotten in between. So I usually use like a little uh, a squeegee, you know, those little fuzzy squeegee things to clean out the middle and also spray the insides of these with cooking spray and then put them in. And that way they'll just come right out. But if for whatever reason they do get stuck, just soak it in some hot water and then give it a little bit of a jiggle and then they should come out uh, eventually. So like I was saying, this thing does get hot. So keep it away from anything that's heat sensitive. You don't want to put chocolate nearby. You don't want to put anything like uh, plastic, anything that might melt because it does get very hot. So try to keep it uh, somewhere safe where it's not gonna cause anything to melt or damage anything that's heat sensitive. What I would recommend if you've never used a bread machine before, start out with the recipes in this book. And once you've mastered a few of them, then you can go ahead and try to modify some other recipes that are not originally from the book and try to incorporate them using the bread machine. All you have to do if you're using a, a recipe that isn't from this book is to put in the uh, ingredients in the correct order and your bread will come out uh, just as good if not better. Oh yeah, and so if you're wondering, one of my favorite recipes in this book 
uh, aside from the cinnamon raisin bread, which is just like awesome, you need to try that one for sure, uh, is the pizza dough with beer. I've never made my uh, pizza doughs with beer before, but after I tried this recipe, I was like, whoa, I have been missing out. Like beer adds a lot of flavor to your dough. So if you're, if you're kind of tired of the same old pizza dough recipe, make sure you try it with beer and you will be impressed. You gotta use a good, you can't use a cheap beer, you gotta use a decent uh, German, I used a German, I think it was a wheat beer, I forgot what it was called, but you wanna use a decent, like a, not a cheap beer, not an expensive beer, but something in the middle and uh, with a good wheaty flavor. That is my recommendation for pizza dough and the cinnamon raisin bread recipe that's in this book. Those are my top two favorites. All right guys, so I think that was pretty much it. Uh, if I missed anything, I'll make sure to uh, put it in the description below. If you have any comments, uh, questions, or tips, make sure to share them so that we can learn from each other. Other than that, that's gonna be my uh, review for today. If you like this video, let me know by giving me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this one. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. See ya. My favorite part about this machine is the little looking glass so you can see how your bread is doing. It's always fun to check on things that you get to eat. I think so.